Hey YouTube, long time no see. I'm sure you're reading the title that I put on this video, which is probably something like, I got drugged in Japan, or how I got drugged in Japan. And you're probably thinking to yourself, Houston, what is this? We come here to see you in pain, all right? And giving us science about pain. You know, to be fair, getting drugged could be a form of pain. <laughs> yeah, you know, they, they, you're right. Yeah. It, it was emotional pain. But if you didn't know, uh, I announced it in my previous video, I went, on a vacation to Japan. So now that I'm back home, I figured I would love to share my experiences with you all. Also, this will be the first time Jake is hearing about my Japan travels. So he's kind of like the proxy of the audience. He'll maybe ask the questions that you want to ask. I'll do my best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, if you like this kind of more laid back, relaxed content, let me know by hitting a like on this video and commenting down below. And if you're just here to see me get hurt, don't worry. There's a lot more of that coming. You know, I may have come back from Japan a more cultured man, but my dedication to pain science remains the same. Okay. I got a lot left to do. So without further ado, uh, let me regale you with my Japan adventure. Roll some kind of credit or title screen. <laughs> <laughs> I figure before I tell the details of my trip, how I got drugged, etc. I want to tell everyone why I decided to go to Japan. I had a good buddy that went with me to Japan and this good buddy, you guys have seen in the video, this is going to be like an immersion break. He's our studio audience member. <laughs> Turns out he's my friend. <laughs> I never would have put two and two together. Oh, wow, yeah, it's crazy, right? <laughs> yeah. But essentially, we I've been friends with him a long time and we kind of got, got closer and bonded over this crazy thing called anime. Have you heard of this? I am a fanatic. <laughs> yeah, Japanese animation, okay? It might be cliche, but I wanted to go to Japan large part because I'm a big anime fan. Love anime, I've watched pretty much the majority of everything. Uh, and it honestly got me really interested in Japanese culture. So I think a lot of people when they go to Japan, maybe it's more well thought out than my trip. <laughs> a plan? A, a very loose plan. <laughs> out of, uh, maybe an outline. Uh, so you were really just going to find some anime <laughs> girls. No, no, no. That's it. No, I was not. I was there to experience the culture, okay? Of waifus. <laughs> Sure, I mean, you know, if I found a waifu, cool, you know, but if not, that would have been also cool. Not a big plan. All I knew was the hotels I was staying at and the locations. So we went to Tokyo, Kyoto, and Osaka. Kyoto and Osaka are pretty close to each other. Um, you guys can critique my places of where I chose to stay in the comments, but I was pretty generally happy with those three p picks. But we got Tokyo. Uh, got an Uber to the hotel. Uh, this day was pretty chill. We found a ramen shop day one there. The most divine ramen I've ever had in my life. <laughs> it was just so savory. The umami. The umami was so strong. It was just, it was the best. What's and umami? Savory. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Another way to say savory. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Got that from Food Wars. I thing. thought that was going to be like yeah. a type of food, so. Yeah, no, no. It's a, it's a way, it's a way you describe food. Okay. Oh. Long story short, I ate a lot of food in Japan. I wanted to try all the food, different foods I could. And the verdict is the food there is a lot better than America. Oh, way better. Cliff Notes version of Tokyo. I went and saw Tokyo Tower, second highest building, tallest building in Tokyo. In that though, as well, they had a VR arcade. Now you're speaking my yeah. language. <laughs> Now, I, we went into it because it was really cool. The walking in is super, I took a video of the walking in. It's like, it's like this reflective thing and all that. And it's a three floor arcade. So in each floor has different things. We only had an hour or like, it was like two hours in it, but it went by instantly. Yeah, uh, I'd be there all day yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one day just for arcade. Yeah. Come to find out those places are all over Japan. After that though, I went to a place I really wanted to go, Akihabara. Now, if you watch any anime or follow any like Japan uh, YouTubers, uh, Akihabara is like the otaku anime like uh, hub of Japan. So this is where they hurdle all the anime stuff? Yes, yeah. kind of. First thing we did when we went to Akihabara, I went to a maid cafe. Describe this maid cafe. <laughs> I'm very curious what yeah. that entails. Well, you see, um, 
getting a little red here. <laughs> <laughs> a maid cafe is a cafe where maids serve you mm, food. You liked this, didn't you? <laughs> I had so much fun. <laughs> I would say it's more than just eating. It's an experience. I hope these maids get paid a lot because they are doing something like 24 seven. They're not just serving you food. They're putting on a show. Oh. They're like dancing up front. Uh, you know, I ordered a drink called the three second stare. Longest three seconds of my life. She had like a little clapboard and I had to stare at her for three seconds and it was over but it felt forever. Uh, it's a weird thing that you can buy. I will say, I think uh, me and my friend Austin stuck out like a sore thumb when we were in there because uh, we sat down, they had to put us on the table in the back. Uh, and immediately these uh, four Japanese men kind of peer over and like stare me down for a second. They to take their maids and <laughs> yeah, they, they recognize this. Yeah, some American man trying to steal the maids. <laughs> <laughs> the maids are very like over the top. They serve you food, and then they're, they, since we're American, they're trying to be very nice with us. They like, <laughs> moi moi coon, <laughs> with hearts. <laughs> moi moi coon. Every time they serve you something, <laughs> they want you to say it. This is moi. your guilty pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there was a, you know, listen, that was, it took a lot of strength to sit through all that, you know, because I'm a, I'm an American man. Okay. You like I like it? lifting weights. Damn it. <laughs> like lift, lifting weights and drinking whiskey. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is the complete opposite of that. That's the biggest reason I wanted to go to a maid cafe because you don't see that in America or really anywhere else. Uh, so I highly recommend it. If you're ever in Japan, go to a maid cafe because it is a very unique experience. But after that, we toured Akihabara and we started doing some shopping. And Jake, I got you a gift, you know, a souvenir. You got me some? Yeah, I got you some. And I think I hope you like it. Is it so what I found in Akihabara. Hopefully it's not a maid outfit. <sighs> oh shit, boy. <laughs> yep. Jake told me he wanted Asana, so from Sword Art Online. Oh. So I got you Asana. That is scandalous. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> I got a little story about this gift. Before I got that, I got myself this. <laughs> oh. It's Rem. <laughs> Best girl Rem. You know, the one I got the body pillows of? Yeah, it's her in the Halloween outfit. <laughs> We're gonna have to cut right here. This is getting too weird. <laughs> you know, I'm not a figurine type of guy. Once again, I'm an old fashioned American man. Uh, but uh, there's no way I wasn't going to Japan and not at least getting one of these figurines for myself. Those are pretty cool. Pretty cool, but yeah, uh, I got this one and then I was on the hunt. I was on the hunt to find you an asana because I saw this asana in the same place I got this one and I was like, if I can't find one, I'm going back and buying that one. <sighs> You're a gentleman and a yep. scholar. Thank you. So uh, put it in your office with some pride. <laughs> Yeah, maybe don't let uh, your girlfriend see it. <laughs> it was a gift. <laughs> it was a gift, honey, I swear. No, I don't love her more than you. I just loved her first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Akihabara, awesome. I honestly wish we spent more time there. Next day, we went to the fish market. I would say the name, but I would butcher it. It's like... <laughs> There's, it's a very iconic fish market in Tokyo. We went there and my only goal was to get some of the freshest sushi I could find, you know, cause it's like, this is where they're bringing in the fish, selling the fish. Uh, I think somewhere in the area, they have like an auction for like tunas and stuff like that. You know, tuna can go for like hundreds of thousands of dollars. What? Yeah, full full size tunas. They can they can go for some serious cash. Uh, but this is like the freshest of the fresh. So we're at this fish market, and there's like all these street food vendors and stuff. And here's my first complaint about Japan: no trash cans, no trash cans everywhere, anywhere. Okay, maybe at the stations. And it's amazing that place is as clean as it is because you cannot find a trash can for like miles. I think that's. That's normal for some foreign countries. Like, I think, like, Ireland also has, like, no trash cans, like, anywhere. My only pet peeve. I'm, I'm totally cool with it, but when there's, like, an area uh, full of street food and stuff where it's, like, encouraged to be buying street food and stuff, and there's no trash cans, it's like, what do you do with the all my sticks that I got for the, the meat sticks? 
<laughs> takiyaki <laughs> sticks. Put them in your pocket. <laughs> yeah, put them in your pocket. Like, Luckily, we could sort of find places at that fish market. Some people had trashes. But at that fish market, I had the best sushi of my life. We went to a, like a, there was like a little restaurant right in that fish market. The most divine sushi. The freshest tuna and salmon. The tuna would just melt in your mouth. Well, now I'm jealous. Yeah, so good. So good. But after the fish market, we went to the sumo. <laughs> the sumo. That's right. And it turns out it was the same sumo tournament that PewDiePie went to recently. Oh, I didn't even know PewDiePie went to the sumo tournament. Me either, until uh, Austin, who was on the trip with me, uh, sent me a video that he was at the sumo tournament. And I looked at the video. I'm like, yeah, that's the same place we were at. But sumo, pretty cool to see in person. So I don't know the sport of sumo, but isn't it like a lot of pushing? Can I slap? Can you slap a little there bit? There you can, yeah, yeah. You, you, we saw some of that, like some faster guys. Uh, you know, sometimes we, you, there would be like, it looked like a guy was totally outweighed, but he was quicker and you could almost like outmaneuver <laughs> him, you know, a little bit more spry. <laughs> but if you're ever in Japan and you got the opportunity to see a sumo tournament, I'll definitely recommend it. It's uh, one of those, another one of those things that is uniquely Japan uh, in a pretty cool experience. Now, where this title of the video came from was I went to a club in Japan, <laughs> you know? Only reason was I we had no plans. This was our last night in, in Tokyo. The next day we had to get on a train, go to Kyoto. On Instagram, someone looked, uh, replied to one of my stories of me in Japan and said, you should check out this club. I'm not gonna say the name of the club because I'm uh, not recommending anyone to go there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they told me to go to this club and my buddy Austin is sleeping in the taxi on the way there. <laughs> catching in a nice power nap. I'm like, oh great. This is the setting the tone for the night. But we get there. One thing that was didn't seem like a red flag right away, but probably it was in hindsight. Two foreign guys got, come to Japanese bar. We noticed right away there was like VIP areas, right? Because we tried to walk into one and they're like, no, you can't, no, nope, don't do it. We got like a drink or two uh, and we had this Japanese guy comes up to us and starts talking to us. He actually spoke some English, like we could have a conversation with him. We just thought it was a friendly Japanese man, perhaps, you know, how he couldn't possibly be in cahoots with the bar, the, the club, right? So I'm not, I'm not gonna say his name or anything. Uh, he, you know, being really friendly, I was just talking to him because I thought he was like, you know, I'm kind of getting some insight into Japan. You know, I kind of told him I was a YouTuber here and then immediately he was like, oh, wow. And then we figure out about the VIP section and I was like, you know what'll be really funny? If I buy the VIP section. Yeah. This will be a, a hilarious joke. And then I could take an Instagram video of, b of being in the VIP section. They explained the pricing to us. Essentially, it's two hours. You have to buy a minimum two bottles of champagne. Bought the VIP. At first, started off pretty dang cool. I had to order the two bottles. I bought the cheapest ones. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole list. I'm like, yeah, give me two of the cheapest. Because I'm just here for the joke. They they were started pouring our champagne, right? The weird thing is, and why I kind of think I got drugged there was I went from perfectly fine to browned out trying to piece together my night the next day level within it was like it was only two hours that we had that VIP I didn't really think anything of it I was just trying to like have a good time and like enjoy the stupid amount of money I paid for this stupid VIP joke I did but my friend next to me he was being more cautious he started noting like uh, about how there was like a stream of bubbles coming from my glass. Austin was being so paranoid. He had him pour every glass that was at the table because he was looking at mine having that stream from the bottom. Mm -hmm. And he's like, pour all the rest of the glasses. And I don't like, I don't know anything about champagne, but all the other glasses had like bubbles around the outside, kind of what you would expect from champagne. You know, it's the bubbly, but mine had just had one singular stream. <laughs> just. You got drugged. <laughs> <laughs> Come to find out that one guy that talk, started talking to us at the beginning of the night, he's like, yeah, like I said, he's in, he kind of works for the bar. So he kept coming in and checking on us. And then my friend, Austin, he's like, listen, did you drug us? <laughs> 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 and he started like grilling them, grilling them, like, hey, just just tell us if there, is there drugs in the champagne. He's like, he's like pointing at me. He's like, he started to act a little weird. That guy ended up disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, you know, I don't know if it was because there was like maybe some translation issues happening. Mm. But you know, in my head, the immediate reaction would be him denying it, saying no, 
but he just kind of disappeared. So do you remember the rest of the two hour session? Or Sampley, no? Essentially what happened, we spent like 45 minutes downstairs and then we decided we were gonna go upstairs to the third floor. As soon as we get up there, this is where I still remembered stuff mostly. I noticed a lot of foreigners up on the third floor. I don't know what, why that is the case. I don't know, but there was a lot of foreigners up there. They put us in a place. But then, you know, this is where my memories just starts going in kind of like patches. At one point I was smoking a cigarette <laughs> at the back of the bar <laughs> with two Japanese dudes, <laughs> you know? Uh, I, From what I've told, my friend said I was having a great time. When the two hours ended, I think he stopped me from buying more time. I ended up going back to the hotel, got a taxi back. My friend organized all that because I, I was useless. <laughs> I, I don't even remember the drive back. It was like 6 a.m. I ended up vomiting my guts out. Uh, mysteriously, and that was the whole day. I was I was ranting about how was I that drunk? Uh, I do remember that when I started coming to at the hotel. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I would have been in a lot worse scenario if I didn't have a friend looking out for me because uh, I probably would have bought a lot more stuff. You've been on top of the VIP table. Yeah, your shirt uh -huh. off. yeah, uh -huh. partying. Yeah, uh, chain smoking some cigarettes that someone gave me. I don't even smoke cigarettes. <laughs> but hey, uh, long story short, my recommendation avoid clubs in Japan. So we went to Kyoto, took the bullet train, saw Mount Fuji. I got, had a really nice hotel in Kyoto, had like a terrace and everything. I was like, you know what? Rough last day in Tokyo. I'm gonna chill in Kyoto. We went to an onsen. You know what an onsen is? I don't. It's essentially a establishment where people go and they bathe. Penis is out. Oh, <laughs> yeah. is it all dudes? Yeah, it's segregated. Yes, it's segregated, but it's not weird in Japan. Okay, I think in like our Western heads, you know, we think about bathing in front of a bunch of dudes and we're like, <laughs> gay, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like- I just have four flashbacks of high school showers <laughs> yeah, out uh, in the gym room. I'm just like, <laughs> just don't look anybody. I looked up the etiquette before going to the bathhouse. Uh, idea is, you know, you derobe, you have a little tiny towel, a little tiny towel, wouldn't even wrap around me. They said online, you know, it's kind of polite to cover yourself when you're walking from bath to bath. Uh, I noticed right away that was not the case. Everyone just walking around, towel over their shoulder, uh, you know, uh, proud. <laughs> Let it all hang Yeah, out. but you shower first, clean yourself completely when you first get in and then you can get into the bath. They're like almost like hot tubs, but it's like mineral, mineral baths, you know, it's from spring water and stuff like that. Uh, you know, at first I was a little like, it, I was like, took me a little bit to like reprogram my brain to be comfortable uh, in that scenario, but it didn't take me long. Uh, it's like, you know, you're sitting in the bath and you have like the thousand mile stare ahead of you, just not looking at anything, just enjoying. <laughs> as a bunch of naked dudes walk past you. Uh, you gotta like uh, leave your shame at the door. <laughs> I would say it's not for everyone. Uh, Cause uh, if you're insecure, perhaps it would be a tough place. The longer I was in the onsen, the more like comfortable I became. Cause I was like, everyone's just here relaxing. This is just a normal thing. It's not weird, okay? It's not weird unless you make it weird. Not weird unless you make it weird. So then uh, once I got to that level, I started like, touring around because it's like it has a bunch of different like kind of like baths open baths there's an outside section the one i went to had an outside section where they had like just a stone where you just lay on the stone and there's like some water hitting your like legs and it's just like the cold air hits you up top it's so so relaxing it's such, it was a great time and then in this same whole building they have a masseuse and a restaurant so i after the onsen i got some food and then I got a massage, a 20 minute massage. My friends already made the joke. I know there was no happy ending, okay? No? It was a dude. <laughs> still no? No, still no. <laughs> uh, I was, I my back was sore, okay? I just wanted a massage for the sake of getting massage, okay? I don't know why you, people have to spin it in a weird way. Were you offered? No! It, there was multiple people getting a massage in the same room. That's called a group. <laughs> Honestly, the onsen experience was amazing. The, maybe it's just the location I went to it was highly rated on Google, but it was like a one-stop shop of relaxation. After that, we started our shrine shrine experiences because that's what Kyoto really has, a ton of shrines. First one I went to was the Golden Pavilion, Kinkaku, Kinkaku Shrine. I probably butchered that. It's a very, it's a shrine I saw in an anime. It's a beautiful, like, golden 
just like the name says, a golden little house, you know, on a lake. And they have it really nice where you just kind of touristy walk right on through. You can light some candles at one part. I think I wished for love or something. <laughs> It'll come to you. It'll come to you. It, uh, I know. I lit the candle. Oh, okay. I lit the candle. Okay. Next day, we saw an even cooler shrine. Fushimi Yanari Shrine. I messed that up. But uh, it's the shrine that has thousands of Tori gates. It is a beautiful hike up a mountain. You get some sweet views of Kyoto. You can see the whole city. Highly recommend it. If you go to one, go to that one. Cause it is like, you can spend a couple hours there, sh like going to different shops, getting some souvenirs, hiking up the mountain. Uh, just, you know, make sure that you have at least enough physical fitness to make it. Uh, Austin, I love you, but you know. You, 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 did he struggle? He only made it hat to the, <laughs> to the, it was like the upper part. I did the, like the last 30 minute loop alone. But yeah, that's one I would 100% recommend. Uh, Tory Gate, just look that up, you'll find it. I can't leave Kyoto without saying this. Uh, Austin had a, a Omo rice place, which is uh, an egg on top of rice, essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, he saw a YouTube short. Turns out that YouTube short has 60 million views. Wow. Uh, so, but I didn't know any of this. I was like, he's like, you want to eat at this Omo rice place? He saw a thing about it. Okay, let's go. It's pretty close to the hotel, literally like eight minute walking distance. We get there. There's already a line out the door, and it's at a, it seems like a very small place. It's like in an alley. And uh, they're like, with well, people were like foreigners, and they're like, yeah, it's a, it's a four week uh, wait reservation. <laughs> and we're like, what? I was like, I'm, I'm, it's me. I don't, I've, I've just heard about it in the last day. And <laughs> we're like, oh, this is news to us. And they're like, we talked to the, the lady that was working there. Luckily, she could speak English. She's like, well, just wait, wait five minutes. Uh, we might be able to get you in. And then sure enough, we got in. Mm -hmm. So we're in the very back. It's a very tiny place. Maybe holds 20 people top. I figured out why. This this is a whole show. This guy, he's a beast. He's a beast of a chef. He And it's like, he's like very theatrical. He's like flipping the omelets, flipping the eggs in the air, flipping the rice. And then he comes out to your table and he does a special splitting technique. you will like, you will like break the egg and unique in different ways it's a whole 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 experience we were very lucky to get in with no reservations like like i said it's a uh, omelet and rice but uh very good tasting highly recommend uh kichi kichi omo rice turns out he's uh very famous <laughs> which was news to me he has his own brands of uh cooking utensils and everything it's awesome yeah after that very short train ride uh to osaka and by this point, we were dead tired. <laughs> so I didn't do nearly as much as exploring in Osaka as we should have done, but uh, we did do a couple cool things, and the majority of it was drinking sake. <laughs> you don't have to do much. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I like sake. Austin likes sake. So we started going to this, like, little sake bars. I'm happy we did because we learned quite a bit uh, doing it. The people that work there seemed very, like, willing to, like, they would give us pamphlets of, like, information stuff so we could learn more about, about sake and, like, how to drink it, how to serve it, where it's coming from, the best prefectures to get it from. Uh, and this happened at a couple places. Uh, they would just give us more pamphlets and explored a place called Danton Bori. Uh, a lot of cool little places there. Could have probably spent much more time, but we ran into, like, dart bars, pool bars, uh, stuff like that. There was an all-you-can-drink bar. Uh, and you know, the crazy thing on all these bars we went to, surprisingly less drunk than we were at the club. And we drank more. We drank more and we're surprisingly less drunk. You got drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing I did in Osaka was uh, visit Osaka Castle. Uh, people kind of recommended it to me and it's a very historic site. Castle grounds, uh, have a museum. It's kind of like a little, it's a giant park really. Uh, very nice. Uh, you got climbed to the top of the castle, got some sweet views of Osaka of that. Uh, and that was about the whole trip. Japan as a whole, though, awesome country. It was a great trip. Uh, did everything for me that I wanted it to. Uh, got to experience a different culture. and uh, But at the same time, made me really appreciate uh, my 
like two dudes, anime bros on a tr an adventure. Uh, we got around surprisingly easy and did everything we need to. The the service there for like restaurants and everything is immaculate, amazing. Even though we don't speak the language, uh, it is such a pleasant country to uh, visit. And I the first thing I noticed when I flew back in Detroit, man, these bathrooms are dirty. <laughs> <laughs> But now I have some knowledge. I know how to get around a little bit better, and uh, I know some places to go and not go. Uh, you have to take me sometime. So may I, maybe I'll go there again with the intent of maybe uh, vlogging it a little bit more now that I've experienced it once. Amazing, amazing place, like I said, and I highly recommend if you ever get the chance to visit, go ahead. I hope you enjoyed my uh, travels to Japan. Uh, maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't. Uh, it was kind of just a story time because, you know, Jake hadn't heard any of this yet, so. But we'll be back to pain science stuff immediately after this video. And I got a lot of ideas, some uh, light goal stuff like turf burn, getting hit with a driver, stuff like that. It'll be fun, I'm excited. I'm, my body's healed. I got a massage in Japan. I'm in like great health. That's how you had to go all the way to Japan. To get, a you get a massage, first massage of my life, by the way. And it was, it was amazing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so I'm healed up and ready to hurt my body. That sounds weird saying. That's your life. Yeah. That's, that's how we make the money. <laughs> but thanks for listening and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.